Disaster. Orange Sky. Staten Island. Tsunami. Flooding. Another one of those dreams, you guys. This is a prophetic dream. And this dream also came from our regular viewer, Anthony. Okay? Now listen to this. I'm going to tell the story. I'm going to do a dramatic narration done by Pat Love. That's me. Okay. And I want you to hear this dream. It's very prophetic in nature. It, it's very real, too, the way he told it. I'm telling it personally so that you see the flow. Of, you know, you can picture it happening. So this didn't happen to me. This happened to Anthony in a dream. All right? All right. Here we go. Now, I'm out with my friends and my family. We are having a ball. This is a normal, beautiful day. We're in Staten Island, New York, right? Okay. And while we're in Staten Island, uh, we're hanging out together all day long now. I remember we were in this little house, right? And I also remember the kids were playing out on the street. That's typical for New York streets, okay? And I was inside of this little house talking with my friends and family. We're laughing. We're kicking it. We're joking. We're, you know, playing the dozens. You know how we do all that fun stuff, okay? But we're having a ball, all right? And it got a little hot in there. So I said, let me get outside and get some air. <laughs> and I'm watching the kids play up and down the street. It was cute. It was, it was a fun day. But all of a sudden, I noticed it was really strange. The sky, when I looked up, started turning orange. Just suddenly started turning this bright, bright, weird orange. Weird, isn't it? And then next thing I know... I'm looking at the kids. They don't seem to be bothered. Everything's cool with them. They're having fun. And I look a little further up the street, and I keep looking and keep looking. And next thing I know, I noticed a wave, a giant wave heading towards our direction from the far distance. I hollered to everybody, get inside. I gathered up the kids. I got them inside. I said, take cover. Don't touch anything. I'm running around the house, securing it as best I can, locking all the doors, securing the windows. You know how you do when you see that kind of sight coming. And I'm hollering to everybody, don't touch anything. Okay. Now, our little house was nestled between two very tall, large houses. Okay. And I'm figuring they will get the brunt of this whole thing. Hopefully we won't. So, I'm hollering at everybody, get back as far as you can and take cover. Don't touch a thing. And I peep out the window. And you know what? Water began seeping in the house at that point. And as I looked around, we were totally surrounded with water. It was at a very high level. Totally surrounded. And But the house was still standing. Nobody was hurt. Now, here's the trip. As we see this water seeping in, you know, in different spots in the house, we notice one of the big houses starts moving and got uprooted by the pressure of the wave. And it's headed towards our house and it crashes in. I didn't see anybody get hurt, but it crashed into our house. Right at that moment, believe this or not. Now, remember, I told everybody, don't touch anything, right? One of the family members decide heading toward the door. They're heading toward the door. Can you believe that? And they're reaching their hand toward the doorknob. And I'm thinking, no, don't touch anything. And next thing I know, boom, I woke up. I was so glad to get out from that tree. <laughs> Who knew what was going to happen next when they opened that door? Anyway, okay. That dream was so real. I, that thing stuck with me. It was so real. That thing scared me to death. That was Anthony's story. Okay. This is Patricia Love speaking now. Putting in her two cents. You guys... We're in the last days. We really, really, really need 
to try to win as many souls as possible. And those of us who don't want anything to do with church, who don't believe the Jesus thing and the God thing, and you know what? It is better to take a chance and say, well, I can say the sinner's prayer and ask God if he's real to let me know rather than not do anything. Because when things start hitting the fan, folks are going to die, you guys. You don't want to be one of them, especially without the Lord in your heart. What if it is real? What if this whole salvation thing in Christianity turns out to be real and you don't find out until you enter into eternity the hard way? By then, as my friend used to say, it's everlastingly too late. Whatever you're going to try, try it now. Try, get to know God. Ask him to come into your heart in spite of your doubts, in spite of your questions. Just, just pray that prayer, please. And those of you who have family members, pray for them. Please pray for them. I don't know what else to say, but the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man does avail much. So please, whatever you do, pray, pray, pray. God bless you. Remember, you must be spiritually prepared, which is of the utmost importance, above and beyond being physically prepared. Amen. God have mercy on us. God bless you.